Hello everyone, this is Brendan from Mechajiki. In this video, we're going to show you how to render with Render Garden across platforms. So we're going to make a project on Windows, but then actually render it on the Mac. Now this is, I'll probably say this a bunch of times, this is an unsupported feature. Um, there's a lot that can go wrong. You have to edit the Python scripts. Um, it's just a lot of problems could happen in this, but if you are daring and you want to try to do it, um, we'll show you in this video how to do it. But again, it's uh, not officially supported. If you have trouble, um, we're not going to be able to give you a whole lot of help. Okay, so here you see we have our Windows project. I've actually made a little uh, checklist using another After Effects project. It's right here. So here's a few things that you're going to have to make sure you do when you want to render cross platform. Okay, so first, all footage has to be on the same shared drive. Um, this actually applies to any multi-machine rendering situation, but I want to reiterate it. Um, you need to have all the footage, everything your project depends on, in the same sort of little universe so that when it gets mounted, everything is accessible to the render nodes. So that's just always going to be very important. All right, number two. All machines need to have the same fonts and plugins. Uh, again, this is something to apply to even to the same platform rendering, but I'm going to reiterate it. It's, it gets a little trickier when you're doing multi-platform because you don't, you can't just copy the plugins over from one to the other one. So you have to actually go get the same plugin with a different platform. You can't always do that. Um, so that's obviously going to be a requirement that you have all the all the fonts and plugins you need for that project have to be on every render machine. All right, number three, use the increment and save feature. Okay, so this is a checkbox in Render Garden that is off by default, but we're going to need to use it. And so what this does is, whereas a usual default Render Garden um, seed planting will make a copy of your project in the seed bank, and that's what it will use to render. Um, when you check this box, it will actually increment up your project to a new version and then use the old project as the render project. And the reason that's important is because it will leave your project in the same place. When we move and make a, or make a copy of the project normally, um, that can tend to break paths that are relative. So if you have the same platform, uh, all the paths are we call the absolute paths, the full paths, those are all going to be the same. But when we go to a different platform, you know, the, the path is just formatted differently. And so we need to have the relative paths not break. And the only way to do that is to not move the project to a new folder. So what we do is we increment the project, and the old project is the one that get rend gets rendered. Um, and that's using that increment and save feature. So that's an important thing to turn on. And finally, number four, uh, the gardeners that you launch, they all have to use the edited Python script, um, which we are going to show you how to edit shortly. Um, so that's going to be a very tricky part of this process for people that don't know Python. Um, it's not too hard, but still, you probably didn't expect to have to edit our Python scripts in order to use Render Garden. But for this feature, you have to. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to reopen that Render Garden project. There it is, and now we go into, uh, into Render Garden. Let's look at these prefs, and there it is, the Increment and Save checkbox. So we'll check that, and that should be all we have to do in terms of these settings. So if you look at the top of this window, you'll see that we're using version 2 of this project. Um, and I'll go find it here on our R drive, projects. So there's our version 2. And so, as I said before, when we plant the seeds here, um, we're going to create a version 3 because we have increment and save on. So that's checked. Now we go, we'll just, let's just use eight, uh, 8 seeds here this time. Um, we'll just verify that the... Uh, Increment save is on, it is. All right, now we plant some seeds. All right, now the, um, we're not gonna render in this machine, so we hit the close button, and you see that we're now in version three of the project. Um, 
so I can turn this down. You see we have a version three here, but um, the version that's gonna actually be rendered is version two. That's the one that we're gonna use. Okay, so here we are on the Mac. First thing we, need to, thing we need to do is mount the server. So I'm gonna type in here, that was command K there to uh, connect to server. So SMB colon slash slash, SMB is Samba, that's the Windows networking protocol. Then we put the IP address in there that we remembered from before. And you can see as our R drive. Um, perhaps I should have given that a better name than just R, but um, it works, there it is. And you can see we have our seed bank and and here you can see we have the seeds all set to ready. So this is looking fine so far. You see our, uh, the actual render project is right there, of course, the one that's going to be rendered when we do it this way. Um, now, as is often a good idea, let's just open the project in the Mac here, and we can see that it did everything came in smoothly. So. You know, again, switching platforms, there's a lot can go wrong, and opening in After Effects is the best way to kind of see the error messages and try to debug that kind of stuff. Um, but we're looking good there. We didn't use any any uh, third-party plugins in this demo project, so that helps. All right, so you see that we also have FFmpeg installed on the Mac, of course. Um, I have this in the Applications folder. And then, of course, down here we have the Render Garden folder. I ran the installer for Render Garden um, with the uh, Render Node thing turned on, option turned on. Python, of course, is already on the Mac, so there's no Python installer. Um, all right, so if I launch this app, the Render Garden Gardener, you see this familiar window where it lets me pick how many gardeners to run. But I'm going to cancel that because, as I told you before, we have to edit the Gardener script. Okay, so the Gardener script on the Mac is actually um, it's actually inside the application bundle here. So how we access that is we have to right click on it and we say show package contents. So you can see we have contents, resources, and there it is, gardener.py. So that's the file we have to edit. Now if you're launching your gardeners from um, After Effects, you'd have to uh, edit the one that's in the script UI plugins or script UI scripts folder. But um, we're going to launch it here so we got to edit this version. All right, so let's use idle. I'll type just open up a new shell type idle. This is the Python text editor that's built into your Mac. On the Windows, you also have it if you have Python installed, which of course you should if you're using Render Garden. So that's in Python 2.7, lib, idle lib, and then if I scroll down here, you'll see this uh, idle.bat file. So double click there and uh, there's the idle text editor on Windows. All right, so back to the Mac. Let me open this gardener.py script. I'll just drag it into the open dialog. And here it is. This is what the, uh, this is what the gardener script looks like. So if I scroll down here just a little ways, um, you'll see that we have this thing here. First, I'm going to turn on tab. This is all done with tabs, not spaces. You can watch the Silicon Valley TV show for information on that debate. Um, anyway, so we're in tabs. We, here we have uh, this dictionary, convert paths dicks. Um, and so this is an array of dictionaries. This is all Python speak. And you see what we have here is basically Mac and Windows paths that are equivalent. So here at the top we have a bunch of these After Effects A render paths, which of course is very important to switch between them. Um, down here we have FFmpeg. It turns out this is, these are the paths that I have FFmpeg installed in. I guess since I wrote the script, I use the paths that I prefer. If you have different FFmpeg paths, you're going to have to put them in here. Notice that when I have a backslash on Windows, I need to put two backslashes. That's uh, two backslashes. That's a programming thing. The backslash character is used as what they call an escape character. So it has a special function. If I want an actual backslash, I need to use two. All right, so down here we have where their, sort of our shared drive is, so we're using the letter R. So we'll set that. Now, what is the Mac path for our shared drive? I think the easiest way to figure this out is you find it in the finder right there. And then if I um, create a new terminal window, so Command N right here, and then drag that into it, it will type in the path for me. So I can see it's volume slash R. So that's how the Mac mounts things, as you may or may not be familiar. So I copied that, and I'm going to paste that into uh, to this spot right here. 
Notice that we want to have a, a backslash or a forward slash trailing, it's just like we have sort of the backslash trailing on the windows. So we just want to make sure that the search from place sort of goes appropriately. All right, so if you have any other paths that might be shared that you might need to switch between, you can add them to this list. But usually, this should be all you need. Um, all right, so we saved. We're going to close this. And then we're going to go and launch Gardeners using uh, the applet, the little app. Um, so we go back in here, Applications, Render Garden. And then we're going to double click this guy. And we'll uh, run a couple Gardeners. Um, of course, we got to pick the seed bank, so we click on the server here. Um, wait a second, there's the R drive seed bank. All right, there we go. And so here's the gardeners, and um, oh, and we get some render fails. All right, well, let me see in here that, <laughs> okay, I made a mistake. Um, you can see that the paths actually do not get replaced. We see still have a C colon, backslash, program files, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that did not work. So uh, I could have edited this part out, but I thought <laughs> rather than that, I'll show you how I'm going to fix this. So first I do control C to uh, kill these gardeners, see all the errors. Let's close them. Um, so I'm going to reopen that, that uh, gardener.py script. OK, I forgot a step. Um, so there's uh, the section where we edit everything. But we have to scroll down um, a ways down from this. What I didn't actually, what I didn't do is I didn't actually turn the replace paths feature on. So there's a if I go down here, you'll see there's a line convert paths equals this options dot convert paths. That's because we uh, we have ability to set this in the command line, but probably easier is just to set that to true, and then save and close. Okay, all right. So I had to edit the pass and then set that option to true to make sure it actually works. So back in here, I'm going to try this again. And hopefully this time it works a little better. So there's our seed bank. And they're starting up. You can make these guys a little, um, a little bigger so it shows better on your screen. All right, and actually already you can see that the command says it's applications after effects. So it's, it's a Mac formatted path. You see right there I printed out in the script, Windows paths converted to Mac. Okay, so this is looking a lot better. And the render has started and not giving me errors. So I think I fixed the problem. All right, so let's, uh, of course, use the magic of editing to speed this thing up. Um, here we go. and. Uh, Let's uh, bring up the activity monitor. We can see the processors. I'm only running two gardeners here. Maybe I should run four. One thing you never know, though, on a per, you know between different projects is um, what the limitation is going to be. Like you know, this the limitation here could have been the bandwidth um, going between the the render node and the server. So sometimes it's not the processor; it's the band, the bottleneck. All right. So here we see it's done the join task. Now it's doing the MP4 task. And, uh, and now it's done. So voila, our, uh, our Mac rendered our Windows projects. And of course, we could have had gardeners going on the Windows side too, and then both computers would be running, um, rendering simultaneously. But we did the tough part here, which is get the other platform to render the first platform. You know, if you want to have the Mac be the server to the Windows machine, what you could do is go into... Um, your file sharing here and make sure that sharing via, via SMB is on. And then this will tell you how to set it up for, um, for the Windows to mount the Mac drive instead. Um, or even better yet, you might want to get a, a, a third device. You can get these things, little hard drives. It's a, you know, a network attach, attached storage, NAS. And that, rather than using a computer to serve files to another computer, you can get this little device, which costs less, and you can serve files to both computers. And that might be a more optimal solution. Anyway, once again, this feature is not officially supported. But um, now you've seen how it's done, and uh, you can give it a try if you want to.